In this video, we're going to talk about incentive stock options, also known as ISOs. You might have heard this term if you are working, starting to work for a startup or in the tech space. A lot of these ISOs are offered by companies in the tech space and early stage startups. So let's look at what are incentive stock options. So incentive stock options is the right to buy a company stock at a predetermined price, which is usually called a strike price or an exercise price. Now, one thing that I do want to um, clarify is that even though it's the right to buy a stock, but remember, you have the option. The, the name states that it's an option. So again, you're not obligated to buy it. You don't have to buy it. It is an option given to you at the time of employment. So let's see, um, and they're typically offered by early stage companies or startup. So let's see what are some of the basics of ISO. So typically there are a couple of key terms that you should be aware of when you are looking at ISOs. Usually there would be an offer date or a grant date. So this is the date when you are joining the company or maybe it could be one month, a couple of days before or after joining the company that the company will grant you the option. So that's called the grant date or the offer date. And the document should state that what is your strike price for the, for the options. So it should say that you can exercise the option at $10. Now, the second term to remember is vesting period. Typically, most companies that offer options, they attach a vesting schedule to it. Vesting means that before before that date, before the vesting date, you cannot do anything with it or you're not given that option. And typically the vesting schedule could vary from, the vesting schedule could be a one-year vesting schedule, a four-year vesting schedule, or you could have different amount of vesting schedules. It could be a quarterly vesting schedule. Again, depends on your grant documents. So this is called the vesting period. After the vesting period, you are free to exercise or purchase your options. And that is that date that you exercise or um, you purchase your options, that's called the exercise date. And then finally, once you have those options, then you can decide to sell that at a later date or on the same date, and that's called the sale date. Now let's see what what is the decision-making process or what action items do you have at these various dates? So at the, on the offer date, your action item includes nothing but accept the offer. So when, you're, when you join the employment, you're given this um, offer letter, all you do is accept the offer for the ISOs. There is no cash outlay or tax implication at that time. Usually, the main decision-making would come at the vesting date or if vesting date happens to be the exercise date and you're thinking of exercising, then usually that's where the most uh, the decision-making time is that should you spend your money to buy the options, even if it's small amount, do you want to spend that money? Do you want to exercise that option? That will depend, again, on a lot of factors. Now, it will depend on your cash flow at that time. Do you have the available cash? to exercise your options. Do you um, also, do you believe in the company? That could be a major factor in the decision-making process. How much do you want to exercise? Or you might have thousand dollar, thousand shares vested, but you might not want to exercise all thousand because the cash need may, may be too much. Some companies do give the option of a cashless exercise, but that's typically only available if the company has already gone public. Now, another thing to make um, that helps decide uh, with the decision-making process is if the company is public or private. If the company has already gone public, you know the value of your company stock. It's trading on the market and you know the value of your company stock. But if the company is private, it might never go public. So. That is a risk that you are taking at that time, and you have to decide. At, you actually don't have to decide if the company hasn't gone public because the decision making is easy in the sense that the company does has not gone public. You don't know the value of the stock. Your stock options have vested, 
So all you can do is just sit on those options and make the decision at the time when the company goes public. So I think with, in my opinion, the, for ISO, this decision making of whether to exercise or not is the diff most difficult part. And the decision becomes easier if the company is public, but if the company is private, uh, the decision becomes harder at that time. Now, uh, there is one other uh, thing that you have to remember with the ISOs is the holding period. The, typically for ISOs to get the maximum tax benefit, the holding period is one year from the exercise date and two year from grant. So that's so typically once you join the company and um, you accept your offer, you have to wait two years from that date and one year from the exercise date to uh, get the most tax benefits. Now let's look at some of the taxation. In this example, we're assuming that your company went public. So uh, $10 was your strike, strike price or your exercise price that you were offered. The company went public before you exercised, so that's, that's great news. Now, on the exercise date, the market price of the share is $20. Now, you, know, you already know that you can buy this for $10 and sell this for $20. So you, at that time, the decision-making is easy. You will go ahead and exercise your ISOs at $20. However, remember, to get the maximum tax benefit, you have to hold it for a two-year period. So if you hold it for a two-year period from your offer date and one-year period from your exercise date, all this is called, and then sell it, it's called qualifying disposition. And anytime you're using the word qualifying into a tax in a tax term, it means that there is some tax advantage for it. So in this case, what that means is the difference between the $10 and the $25, $15, you will only pay long-term capital gain tax on that, which is the favorable tax rate, that, which is the lower one. And depending on your tax bracket, it could range from 15% to 20% or even lower. Um, then the other tax implication happens if we, if the, if you don't decide to hold the stock for two years, you say that, okay, I don't know. I don't want to wait for another one year after my exercise date. So I'm going to sell my company's stock in the same, on the same day as the exercise price, so as the exercise date. So if you sell the company stock right there on the same day, this $10 difference, you're going to pay ordinary income tax on that. And that's called a disqualifying disposition. And, and also, if you, there is other um, tax implications depending on the time of the sale. If you sell the company stock in the same year as your exercise year, then it is going to be ordinary income because again, it is a disqualifying disposition. It is got everything, all the gain is going to be uh, taxed at ordinary income tax rate. Another thing to consider for uh, when you are trying to exercise your options is the AMT or also called the alternative minimum tax. What that means is that if you decide to hold this stock for two years, so on the exercise date or in the year of the exercise date, you might be subject to AMT and depending on your income bracket. So it might not be that you might be in the income bracket where you're not subject to AMT. So it's very important that you consult a tax professional if you are planning to exercise your ISOs and depending on your sale date, it would, um, the tax treatment would be very different. Again, this video is not uh, intended for uh, any investment advice. It is solely for educational purposes only. If you need specific investment advice, please contact a financial advisor.